Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's install, we're doing an amplifier and subwoofer in this 2021 F-150. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this amp and sub to the existing factory audio sound system. Let's get started. Before we jump into things, a couple of things to note. This is an XLT trim, so we actually don't have the B&O amplified factory audio sound system we have a video already on the bno system so if you have the bno oem system we'll link that video in the description as it kind of walks you through how to integrate an amp and sub on that setup being that this is the bass trim bass audio sound system we'll go through the parts needed to make your install happen at home so let's head to the bench to show you the parts that we're using in today's install all right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're using for the install, first and foremost, are the amp and subwoofers that we're looking to install. Now, obviously not pictured here is the subwoofer combo setup we're using. Um, we're doing two 12-inch down-firing SCAR Audio VD shell mount subwoofers in a SCAR Audio box. This box is specifically done for, designed for this generation crew cab, F-150. There are a ton of other variations by SCAR Audio. You can do... Uh, two tens, you could do two twelves, you can do a single ten, single twelve, two eights, four eights, forward firing. Uh, just depends on your application. They also have vented versus sealed enclosures as well. We can link all those variations in the description. To power our subwoofers today, we're going with this Stinger uh, 1000 watt amplifier. This does a thousand watts at one ohm, and that's how our subwoofers are wired as we have two dual voice coil four ohm subs both wired in parallel and then wired together in parallel down to one ohm. Now to wire in our new amplifier to our vehicle, we do need a wiring kit. We're going with this OFC 4 gauge SCAR Audio amplifier wiring kit. It comes with just about everything that we need uh, except for the factory integration piece. Now to connect this amplifier to the factory radio, we're gonna need some sort of line out converter. There's a ton of different variations on the market. Just depends how much you wanna spend. Since we don't have the factory amplifier, we can use this Pack Audio LP7-2. It's also gonna provide a remote turn on wire for us, which is great. So we don't have to look for one elsewhere in the vehicle and to connect it to the factory radio, there's a couple of different methods on how to do so. Um, you can certainly just tap into a speaker wire. We've done that where you pull off a B pillar and tap into a speaker wire, like a rear door speaker connection. Or we can use this LPH FD31 by Pack Audio. This is a radio T harness that allows you to easily integrate an, uh, a line out converter for an amp and sub without cutting into any of the factory wiring. So without further ado, what we're gonna do is start planning our location for our amplifier here. Uh, we started making our mounts. So we made this amp mount and this is gonna snag a bolt and we're gonna mount our amplifier to it. This is a sheet of 12 by 12 ABS plastic. Um, we can link one of these in the description in case you wanna pick some up yourself. We also use a little bit more of our leftover ABS plastic to make a, a fuse holder mount which we'll show you how we're going to use that here in a moment. Now here underneath the seats, obviously, we don't have anything in this pocket, which is super convenient for us. Uh, our other variation of this install with the B&O factory amplifier, that trim truck came with electrical components in this storage cubby. So unfortunately, we couldn't use that for an amplifier mount and said we had to put the amp up underneath the actual rear seat. It was super, super tight. In our case here today, this is nice and open, gives us plenty of space to build an amp rack. Um, down the road, it leaves even more space in case we add a four channel. Now our little mount here will fit about in this space here. Um, there's one, we used a 13 millimeter socket, pulled out that bolt here, and uh, that's where it's gonna bolt into play. So let's head back to the bench, start wiring up our amplifier.
we finished wiring up our amplifier mount here out of that ABS plastic. Just zip tied it nice and clean here. This is our base knob cable and our RCAs. This will feed the signal to the amplifier. This is the base knob to control that base level on the fly, which is nice. We're wiring it towards the driver's side. This is going to be the towards the passenger side. On this end of the amplifier, we did our um, speaker wire outputs. This is a mono amp, but it has two sets of terminals for convenience. We have two subs with two their own terminals. So we wire two sets of speaker wire there. That'll go towards the speaker box because this is towards the front of the vehicle. And then our remote turn on goes down there, put wire ferrules on that as well. This will go down along and we loomed and taped it all the way down. This will run all the way to the front of the vehicle. Ground and power. Um, this ground is about three feet. We'll show you where we're gonna ground it here. Nice clean ground. And then our power wire, we're gonna run all the way to the battery area up underneath the hood. Now the battery is on the passenger side and so we're gonna run this obviously on the passenger side. Um, this won't be zip tied. This will actually go underneath the amp rack and come out the other side. Um, and we'll show you what that looks like once we get this installed. That basically sums up everything here at the bench besides talking about the line out converter, which we'll get to here in a moment. As for the amplifier, we won't get it totally bolted in until we set our gains and get all our tuning done. But for now, we can go set it in place and start pulling wire to its various locations. here we're ready to start pulling wire from the cabin of the truck into the engine bay now our battery is located on the passenger side towards the front here um, our f-150 also has the hybrid system on it but it still has a traditional 12 volt battery now further back behind the battery just behind the factory fuse box is a grommet that we traditionally have used on these f-150s that grommet itself has a nice little nipple that will cut off and that's going to grant us access through that rubber boot to add additional accessory wiring in our case an amplifier and we'll pull our wiring through that boot to connect to the positive post here on the battery now we're going to also want to install a fuse and fuse holder as close to the battery as possible so we can protect that run of wire between the fuse holder and our amplifier all right so we used some flush cuts and went ahead and cut off that nipple there that's going to allow us the access we need to now pull our wire through the firewall now we're going to use a, a metal hanger or some sort of fish to pull wire through that grommet and we're going to snag our wire from the inside and pull it into the engine bay all right so we went ahead and uh put our little wire fish through there Take some time, it, it takes a couple of tries just to get it to drop down where you want. But then we also filled that hole with some soap and water to get it nice and slippery. So as we pull our wire through, it'll pass with ease. Let's go on the inside and show you how we've connected our wire. Up underneath here, that's where it comes on down. Easy peasy. Here's our wire. We've already put some, sprayed some soap and water on it with a spray bottle. Get it nice and wet there. And pull our wire through. Um, from the engine bay side as this is nice and slippery it should pass on through pretty easily into the engine bay all right so back here at the bench we need to prep our fuse holder mount now that fuse box that we removed the lid over to give us a little more space does have a 10 millimeter bolt which we're going to snag to mount our fuse holder here so this is going to sit along the engine bay on the passenger side our power wire is connected into here that runs to the amplifier. Then we're gonna have a nice short lead from this end going to the positive post on the battery. We just use some little bit of heat from a heat gun to get our shape desired there and then snips to cut it into shape. So what we're gonna do now is same thing like our power terminals on the amplifier. We're gonna go ahead and add wire ferrules to our amp amplifier power wire on both ends here with a little bit of heat shrink just to protect it from corrosion. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get our amplifier fuse and fuse holder installed. All right, so we went ahead and uh, got our wire loomed, got our bracket mounted to that bolt there. It's right underneath for the fuse box. 
This is nice and sturdy. It's accessible if needed. We just loosen the bolt and we can get to that fuse if we had to. And then we have a nice short run that'll go to the positive post here on the battery. We haven't done the ground or anything like that, so we're gonna wait to hook that up, obviously. Uh, but for now, that's ready to go. We'll just leave that there. At this point of time, we're done under the hood. Let's turn our attention to our ground, get it mounted to a factory bolt location. All right, so we're back here on the passenger side behind the rear seat. Now, in most F-150s of this generation, you actually have a threaded location where you can use to ground your amplifier. Now, it may differ if you have the factory b &O audio system as this bolt location may be used by the OEM subwoofer. In our case, because we don't have b &O, let's show you what we're using. A threaded bolt location there. And what we're gonna do is clean up that location with the wire brush and get it mounted using a bolt and a lock washer. So, let me go ahead and get that cleaned up and get started for you. Okay, all the paint is all cleaned up there, looks good. Let's go ahead and mount our ground for the amplifier. We went ahead and got that ground all in, as you can see. We can put the carpet back down. Put a nice lock washer there. Nice clean ground. Now, of course, you can always use one of these bolts. You can use one of the seatbelt bolts. There is also a factory ground here on the back firewall there, as all F-150s have them. There's actually two at this location. Um, it's really your call. Since that was available to us, it's a great location for our amplifier and our install. So, with the ground done, next thing we need to turn our attention over to reassembling all these panels where, where we ran our power wire. We're gonna replicate running our wire for our RCA's base knob and remote turn on wire underneath the carpet. We gotta go down the driver's side and make our connections at our factory radio. Wire all pulled nicely here. With it now run through the firewall, let's go ahead and reassemble these panels. Okay, so we went ahead and fed our speaker wire to our sub box right out there. Sub wire, our RCA's base knob wire and remote turn on wire. Go up there, we just fished them actually up underneath the carpet, brought them down here, went through this channel, just like the power wire on the passenger side, working our way forward. Same principle as on the passenger side, worked our way forward through the factory channel. Now we're at this point, we pulled apart these panels, everything's just held in with clips, nice and easy. Now we need to run this and connect it to our radio, and then we'll need to mount our base knob with our base knob wire somewhere at a convenient location in this spot. So what we're going to do now is head back to the bench to explain our line-out converter. Here at the bench, uh, let's talk about this line-out converter a little bit more. Now we got everything pulled out of the box. Here is our line-out converter, and essentially this line-out converter is going to take our high-level bass audio output from the factory radio, drop it down to a low level voltage to feed our aftermarket amplifier the signal it needs so it knows what to play. Now, some amplifiers have this type of feature built into it. Um, our Stinger amplifier does not. It doesn't have a high level input, so we need an external uh, level control. It comes with this harness that essentially plugs into this end, and it has a couple of connections. It has our speaker level inputs. It does come pre-terminated with RCA cables. We're not gonna need our RCA cables here. So what we're gonna do is just simply cut these off. And what we need to do is feed two channels of input, whether it's a single channel that we feed into both or a left and a right signal input. This lineout converter also requires a power and a ground. Now these are optional if you're not using the remote turn on. Um, if you're using the remote turn on, you do need to hook up constant power and ground, and we can show you where we're going to tap into that. If you set those up, as soon as this detects audio over the factory radio, it's going to generate a remote turn on wire, and this wire will turn on your amplifier so you don't have to go to the factory fuse box. It's really convenient. This is going to go actually behind the factory radio. Now, to tap into that effectively, this is where this T harness comes in. It's the PAC LPH FD31, and it is a harness that looks like this where the factory radio harness will unplug from the unit plug into our harness and then our harness will plug into the factory radio providing this this length of wire to modify or use for our aftermarket setup this prevents any need for any manual wiring connections it's already set up to pass through your speakers but you can also add your power and ground connections as you see, we have a yellow and a black here, which is what our pack needs. So we can solder in our yellow and our black to that connection here. And then secondly here, we can go to our front speakers. 
It comes with a base harness connection or a subwoofer harness. We'll plug in one here, plug in the other end. What this does, it keeps that original connection for your speakers, but now provides connection for our speaker level outputs that will connect and it'll feed our line out converter the signal it needs so it knows what to send our amplifier. All right, so we soldered up our harness here. This then will plug into the line out converter. Yellow and black go as according. There is a red in here. It doesn't connect to anything, so we just cut it off. And then as for this, uh, stripes are gonna be your negative and solids are your positive. And being that it's a mono amplifier, it really doesn't matter uh, which set you connect to. So we did our gray set to our red set, our white set to our blue set. And then we'll connect this wire to our remote turn-on wire, which we've already pulled through the vehicle uh, once we get it all installed. Now we'd like to wrap this in some high temperature tested tape, just to get a little more protection in the dash. So let's go ahead and disassemble the radio and go ahead and get everything installed. Now to pull the factory radio out on these trucks, uh, this trim has to come up and out of the way. Um, there's going to be uh, a panel on the top that needs to be unclipped and unscrewed. Uh, this bezel has to come out. We need to pull out these bezels. Heating and air controls come out, and then that'll give us the access we need to get to the actual radio module itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and try to pop this panel off here. Now I'm just using my fingers. All right, so we got these all unclipped. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips all the way around. Next here, we need to unsnap the top bezel, there's going to be a little rubber mat, whether you have the full size or half size. And then also on top, we need to pop out the um, speaker grill if you have a center channel, and that's going to expose two 7 millimeter bolts there on the top as well. So with that top uh, piece now out of the way, you actually can see the radio module. It sits right here on top. You could almost get to the harnesses here on the back. Uh, but again, we're gonna show you the full process in case you want to see the full process. Next thing here, this trim piece that goes along the length of the dash, does, it does need to come out as well. Be very careful. We don't wanna break this panel at all. Just keep working your way along here. All right, with uh, that piece out of the way, you're gonna have some screws holding on the heating and air controls. All no. Now before we pull on that, we just have to take out the trim pieces down below so these can come out of the way just enough to give us the space to pop our radio trim bezel out of the way. There's some tabs that go forward. All the clips here, you pop out and then you have to unclip and pull it back this way. All right, so now we can start unsnapping our heating and air controls, just like that. And that's gonna give us lots of room to work. Now here's our radio module. It's held in with one, two, three, four, seven millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and remove those. Pulled out the bracket, there's four screws, seven millimeters, holding in the radio module. 
And here's our main harness adapter that we're gonna disconnect to connect our T harness. Um, so we're gonna get that connected, show you what that looks like. So up underneath, we fit our RCs up, we zip tied it up underneath the dash, pulled it up there. We're able to pull it all the way out and connect our line out converter to our radio, which is perfect. It's all plug and play. Hooked our line out converter, uh, remote turn on wire, put a crimp cap on there, and then we're gonna zip tie the extra. This will just sit back here. We'll make sure it doesn't rattle. But really in the end, that is it. So what we're gonna do is now reassemble. We didn't have to pull the radio screen all the way out because we could get to the radio module with the screen in place. With the smaller screen, the bezel pops on out to give you more space because we have the full size screen that Ford offers. Unfortunately, it, it takes a lot more. I, we don't wanna break it or damage the panel at all. So we left that there, but this gave us plenty of space to fish wire up underneath. Now at this point in time, let's go ahead and reassemble and clean everything up. So we just tucked our line out converter. We zip tied it to this harness here so it doesn't rattle around. Fits in there great. And at this point of time, we can go ahead and final reassembly of the dash. All right, so radio's all reassembled here. Like a nice and clean. Got our base knob mounted right here, all nice and flush mounted. Easy and accessible, but nice and out of the way. Now, with everything connected at the amplifier, we went ahead and connected the positive on our battery. Now, if you're worried about connecting that, remove the negative first, connect your positive wire, and then you can put the negative back on. So when All right, so that's about it for this install. This went in great. This sounds awesome, tons of bass. Again, we'll link these parts along with different variations in the description here for you, for your convenience at home. Uh, we set our gains to the SMD DD1 to the factory radio. Everything is all tuned, sounds awesome, and uh, in the end, super satisfied with this outcome. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.